guys? How you doing? And welcome to a special late Valentine's Day edition of Channel Chasers. Of course, I'm your host as always, Jay, and joining me as always is my friend, my co-host, my self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How you doing tonight, Brian? Hey guys, I'm alright, but I will warn you, our marathon of sad continues. I mean, this wasn't, I mean, it was, eh, it was sad-ish, but yeah, we'll definitely get into it. Uh, well, I mean, wait, the good, I mean, so Arrow was more of like a celebration of the show. I felt like that was a happy note. Uh, uh, it you know, was, but it was still sad that it was ending. Oh, yeah. Uh, same with the good place. Uh, I, okay, I feel you. Also, real quick before we officially get started, uh, just, you know, I, I took a look at the um, the analytics uh, uh, from last week's episode and uh, the Good Place episode is one of our highest played in a, in a couple weeks, so that's cool. It's at nice. six currently as of recording this, so thank you to all of you that listened. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy this one, too. Um, so, of course, as the title, thumbnail, and all that jazz suggests, we are discussing the Hulu original series, High Fidelity, based on the book, which was also a movie. Uh, I've only seen the movie once and barely remember it, and I've never read the book. It was also a musical. Was it? Huh. Interesting. The, I believe the musical was based on the movie. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But, yeah, those. I've only seen the movie, and it's been a long time. I remember parts, but that's about it. Yeah, and, uh, you know, in this Hulu version, uh, the uh, main character is played by the ever-lovely and ever-talented Zoe Kravitz. Uh, she plays Rob, our titular character. And, you know, I told Brian right off bat, I, you know, as usual, like, I finished first. And I was like, yeah, she's kind of a shitty person. I don't know if I like her. I, I mean, I don't like her. I'm, she's like a bull, but I don't like her, if that makes sense. Uh, yep, Zoe, it's definitely, she's got the Zoe Kravitz likability factor to her, but Rob, the character, is kind of a dick, which also makes sense, though, because you go back and you watch, like, I haven't watched this one, but I have watched a couple of the other ones where... It's like those classic 80s movies with John Cusack, who Um, played Rob in the original. Gotcha. He's always kind of a bit of a dick. Yeah, but he, yeah, she was just all around kind of shitty, and like, you know, she also had this bit of a pretentious attitude, which I kind of expect from somebody who lives in modern Brooklyn, whose name is Robin, but she goes by Rob. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so uh, obviously the premise of the show, it's kind of another one in the same kind of vein as like a Four Weddings and a Funeral, where it's a rom-com turned into a series. Um, And basically this one follows Rob, our, again, kind of shitty protagonist, who, you know, had just recently gone through like a massively bad breakup with you know somebody she was deeply in love with, uh, a guy named Mac, and then you know as she's wallowing in her sorrow as you do post breakup, uh, she kind of comes to this realization like maybe I need to like go back through my history and find out why these people rejected me, and you know. Either way, it's a kind of a win-win situation because, you know, if I find out how they rejected me, I can, why they rejected me, I can fix that about myself. If I find out that, like, it wasn't really my fault, it wasn't really my fault. So, yay. Like, you know, because Rob is definitely not about having accountability for herself. Uh, and you see that all throughout the show. And it's, you know, to the point where it's very frustrating to watch her uh, do things. I mean, you want to like her because she's Zoe Kravitz, but you can't. She makes a lot of bad decisions. You can't look, and as as the messy friend in many of my friendships, 
uh, who has made a lot of bad decisions in his day. I'm not saying, like, I can, you know, parade around here like some saint. But, like, I at least can acknowledge when I've made fucked up decisions and I've actively, you know, sought to improve myself. Rob says that a lot, but she never actually does it up until maybe towards the end when she has nothing left. Um, And so, you know, we'll get into that when we get into spoilers. But overall, I still really like the show. I just, you know, just, again, didn't like Rob. The side characters, like Cerise and Simon, her two best friends that work at the record Mm -hmm. store, they are awesome. Love them. Which, by the way, fun fact for you, the character that Cerise is replacing from the original... You know who played them? Who? Jack Black. That's hilarious. Yeah, uh, it was one of his like first big roles. Uh, and instead of wanting to be a singer, he had this punk band. I could see that. That's definitely a Jack Black thing. Yeah. But he definitely was like the same energy as Cerise. Like I really, I really like it. Cherise. Yeah. You can see it from, from the trailer, because I, re- because I recently watched the trailer. Jack Black basically goes after this guy for wanting to get this pop song for his daughter. Mm-hmm. It's like you can go get that at the mall, and how do you even know that your daughter likes that? Yeah, no, I, I definitely, uh, I, I dig Cherise. Uh, I think I see a bit of myself in all three members of that main trio, uh, for sure. And, uh, you know, the relatability is a big factor to this show. And I definitely related to both, you know, Rob and Cherise, as well as Simon, uh, but definitely more towards Rob and Cherise. Um, for me, it was more towards Cherise uh, and Simon. <laughs> Well, yeah, you, you're not the messy friend. Of course you can't relate to the messy friend. <laughs> Duh. I mean, th- that's obvious. You didn't really have to tell me that, but I'm sure, yeah, the audience knew. Um, um, but yeah, so overall, again, this show is really fun. It has, like, very much like Four Weddings. Uh, you th- it's kind of predictable, but they also throw in some nice spins. And there's a lot of self-awareness to it, very much like but, Four Weddings. But, unlike Four Weddings, don't go in thinking that you're going to have the same. They clearly are done by different people, and so you're not going to have the same kind of ending. Yep. It, and the, it's clear and, that and the, and the comedy is different as well too. Just throwing it's that in there. It's less bubbly than yeah for weddings. Oh yeah, and it's de- and also it is cl- without going into spoilers. It is clear that unlike for weddings, they hope that this could maybe go on. Oh, this is definitely like they're they're definitely aiming for a second season with how they ended it, and we'll get there when we get uh, get towards the end. Uh, but yeah, I think to piggyback off of what Brian said, uh, definitely you know, Four Weddings was obviously helped created by Mindy Kaling, who is like you know an optimistic romantic, whereas you could tell that this show was made by a jaded romantic, and as a jaded romantic myself, like I was like, no, I feel that I like that energy. Um, and, and, you know, while I can also get into my uh, optimistic romantic bag, um, like, which is why I had fun with Four Weddings as well, this one, I, I definitely related to more. And I was like, okay, I, I feel this. I feel this. You know, I, I've been at rock bottoms before. So, like, I, so I, I get it. Um, and this show just was really well handled. Uh, like, all the characters were well done. Um, I especially, like, you know, Again, same case with Four Weddings. I uh, love the side characters. Uh, just overall, a really good show. Uh, and the the exes, at least the ones that we met, they were very complex characters, and it wasn't just like, oh yeah, they were, they were just, this, and so that's why they broke up because they were a shitty person. 
And also, like, it shows, even if some of them, like, were a shitty person when they were together, like, you know, some of the exes they show have gotten their shit together. Unlike, you know, a certain main character. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely interesting. Um, I definitely recommend it, you know, if you're into the whole rom-com thing. Uh, if you enjoyed Four Weddings, I definitely think you might enjoy this, depending on, like, your view of romance. Um but especially if you like Zoe Kravitz, you'll definitely enjoy this show because there's a lot of Zoe Kravitz and it's great. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. So uh, with that out of the way, we did 10 whole minutes of spoiler free stuff. Uh, this has been out for a week. This is why we kind of we always, you know, try and release these a week after this, you know, the series drops. So people have enough time to sufficiently binge them. And by people, I mean, Brian. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to even front. <laughs> but yeah, so hopefully, you know, if you're sticking past this point, uh, you have either watched all of High Fidelity and want to talk about it, or you just don't care about spoilers. Either way, welcome. We are in spoiler territory. Okay. So, Brian, where do you want to start? Well, um, uh, oof. Okay, well, let's start with let's start with the friends. Let's start with the friends, and I'll, let's talk about kind of like how we relate to each of like Rob's friends. Okay, so I guess I'll I guess I'll start off with this one. Um, I so I really relate to Sharice, um, especially because like there was a point in especially in high school where like I I did a lot of like writing songs and saying I was gonna record, make a demo, submit submit it to people because like you know. My my sister, um, you know, uh, I'm not gonna give away my entire my full location, but you know, I live in Virginia, and there's a huge music scene down here. I mean, like, uh, you know, people like Pharrell, Timberland, Missy Elliott, Trey Songz, Chris Brown. Like, Virginia has a huge music scene. So I, you know, I had this like huge aspiration of like trying to make it in in music, and I wrote. I have notebooks and notebooks full of songs. I, you know, I learned to play. I learned to make beats, all this stuff. Um, but I, I never got around to it. And I was always that friend. It's like, yo, I, you know, once you hear my, sh- once you hear my shit. And like, I would like, you know, spit stuff and like, you know, perform at showcases, but I would never, I'd always say I was going to record something and I never did. I mean, I have a couple things on like SoundCloud, but that doesn't really count. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I vibe with Cerise in that way. Cause I definitely like, I understood that struggle all too well. Um, and, um, you know, I especially just love her energy when it comes to like opinions about music. And I love their always the constant back and forth of top five, this top five, that that's a lot of fun. Um, as someone who enjoys making top five videos, that's definitely, uh, enjoyable to listen to like those type of conversations. Uh, but yeah, so Brian, uh, how do you feel about Charisse? I've always been close to music and of course i will openly admit that i've had dreams of being a singer but never actually did anything with it i mean yo uh, Um, i'm not i'm not gonna lie like part of what part of what shut me down was uh stay uh, not 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 to like reinforce this stereotype but i have like you know both religious and asian parents so they were like how are you gonna make money off of this you really think you're gonna make it i'm like ooh. Ooh, thanks for my, hitting me with reality. My main folks. thing was personal insecurities, honestly, but also just the fact that she's a dreamer in general. I vibed with. Oh yeah, um, and also the fact that um, she's like dumb loyal. Even mm-hmm. when she's pissed at her friends, she's still loyal to them. Yep. Yeah, I I, I respected that. I respected that a lot. And that, that's me, that's me, that's part of the reason why I'm Hufflepuff, because I'm loyal as shit. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, she, she's really fun. She's really fun. I, I dug her a lot, um, and, like, her whole arc of, like, finally getting out there, you know, doing music, working with those kids, um, it, it was really awesome. Yeah, Um, and, and I love that, um, she's been boasting about her skills, and then at the end, we actually hear her, and she yeah, actually... and she yeah, she's amazing, and it's just like, well, damn, she wasn't even fun. 
Yep. Uh. She definitely wasn't, and like all of her vibes that she says, you totally get like bluesy Beyonce. Yep. But all yeah. the things that that she's saying, you totally get that. Yeah, like she's not. Just, she's not. She's not just bullshitting. You know, a lot of people when they describe their music to other people, like they bullshit and they mention their influences in like a hodgepodge without really thinking about like, okay. This is the type of shit that I like. I make. Think of it as like uh, this meets this meets this. Nah, you, you uh, like you have to really know yourself to be able to like identify your music like that, especially when you're making music. Um, and you know, as as someone who you know definitely put a lot into it and like has like the same kind of energy as Cerise, where like where uh, confidence is not in short supply. Um, like I definitely like understood because like I'm, I'm i'm able to pretty clearly identify my influences and say i was like okay so it's basically this meets this meets this um and so like i again i totally vibe with her a lot um she is probably my favorite character of the show um, mm-hmm. which uh fun fact for you guys if you don't mind a spoiler for the movie uh that's actually a nod to the movie because Jack Black keeps talking about his punk band, and I forgot their name now, but they have, like, this shitty name. And uh, when you actually hear them in the at the end of the movie, they're actually good, because, you know, Jack Black. Yeah, because Jack Black is all... Whenever he, like, plays a rock star or, like, a wannabe rock star in a movie, you know it's pretty awesome. Like, he, he's always had that energy to him. Just a quick side note, there are a lot of nods and homages to the original. And also, if any of you who are listening were born after the year 2000, uh, we, are also, we are referring to famous YouTuber Jablinski, uh, Jablinski Games. N- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the dude from the Jumanji movies. Oh yeah, that's also more re- more recent. But I just wanted to make the joke about Japlinski games. Um, I get you. I totally <laughs> get you. But um, and that's why I made the joke of dude, because we hear dude from Jumanji and we think Robin Williams, right? But anyway, um, there were a lot of just quick nods, like the um. Like her ex saying, "What is this a John Hughes movie?" Mm. She talks like she's in a John Hughes movie. She does. When John Hughes directed High Fidelity, I thought that was hilarious. And then, and then stuff like when she when she yells, "What Lily girl?" That's like almost an exact moment from the original. Nice. Where he. Where he's yelling about his ex's new fling. Oh, that's pretty dope. Again, but, I don't. Re- I've only seen it once, and I don't remember it at all, to be honest. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember clips here and there, and like I said, I also watched the trailer. Oh, nice. As like a refresher. Gotcha. But um, but yeah, Sharice, she's a cool addition where it's. Like a modern day version of Jack Black's character, because mm-hmm. that because she's definitely got like a more modern vibe. I can see elements of like Lizzo in there, kind of. I could see that, like personality wise, though. She, I was, I was gonna say, she definitely gives uh, like I was gonna say she definitely gives me more of like a like a almost like. Janae Aiko, whispery, like, sage, light in the sage type of girl vibe. Yeah, I just meant, like, Lizzo and the fact that she's like, you are, I'm a bad bitch, you can't kill me. But, <laughs> well, I mean, all all of you artists are like that nowadays. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to get at, is the uh, she is more modern day than oh, yeah. Jack Black's for, character. Cause... For sure. Back then, in the late '90s, early 2000s, everybody wanted to be a punk, like, yeah, rock star type. Mm-hmm. So, 
Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely like vibe with it. Also, like, uh, just fun fact, uh, you know, um, Brian and I both love the show Legacies, and uh, you know, uh, there was a recent character on there who was a love interest to one of our new favorite characters, Lizzie Saltzman. Uh, the character's name was Sebastian, and then like you know, I'm just you know, I'm just chilling. I'm I'm watching this like the day, like I started like the day after Legacy, which is you know a Friday, and I'm watching the episode. I'm watching I'm watching the show, and I'm like, wait a minute, what the fuck are you doing here? Hold on, is that? And I like, Google it. It is. It's Sebastian. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. That was so weird. You lucky bastard. You got, you got Lizzie and Zoe Kravitz. Yup. What? Got to make out with both. What? He got to do more than make out with Zoe Kravitz and more with Lizzie. Yup. Shit. Damn. Good. Good for you, man. Good for you. I'm. I'm glad you're getting. A Indeed, good but of work. I will say, I will say that it did get kind of pissed though. Oh yeah, well, how? Or because why? um, I kind of hope now that he comes back to Legacies, so he can be in a musical. Yeah, like a yeah. musical number, dude. Yeah, his voice was amazing. Yo, in that scene where he was in the studio, and he was hitting those riffs. I was like, oh, okay, okay. After she told him to go weird with it. Yeah, I was like, okay, Sebastian, you got a little bit of a Rex Orange County, like, Ed Sheeran type of vibe to you? Okay, okay. With also Prince, a little bit of Prince. Yeah, Prince, maybe, and maybe, like, a little bit of, like, post uh, 1D Harry Styles. I'm like, oh, all right, I'm feeling this. Yo. It's like, damn. Yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, he's got a lot of shit going on with him. I was like, no wonder you were killing it out here, like. Like after sh- like his show was pretty awesome too, and I was like, okay, he's actually yeah, and, like legit. And to add to his like list of ladies, I heard that IRL he's with Dove Cameron. Oh damn! Cool. Yeah, so that's crazy. But yeah, no, uh, he was he was dope. Uh, loved loved his music. Uh, I honestly was upset they didn't release any of this shit on like iTunes. <laughs> cuz I went and looked cuz every time every time a show comes out and I like a soundtrack I will I will like at least look up some of my favorite songs. I did that with on my block and I I still have a lot of those songs on my phone. Um but yeah, like he was great. He was a nice a side character. He was more the, I mean, sure he was just kind of a one-dimensional distraction in uh, like in terms of for Rob, but as a character he was pretty interesting. Like, you know, he took music pretty seriously. Um, yeah, he was ki- he was a little bit of a generic rock star, but you also have to keep in mind he's nineteen. Like, if I was nineteen and this shit was going down, I'd be acting the same way. Mm-hmm. And but also, if I was Zoe Kravitz is more of like our age, I don't think I'd be messing with a nineteen year old personally. Mm. Well, I mean, <sighs> technically, they are an adult. And there's technically nothing wrong with it, but still, no, uh, no. See, he, he, here's why. Here's why I have a personal problem with it because I, my youngest brother, is about that age. They aren't. So, like, they're that still just makes me to, think they're in that weird haze where they're an adult, but they're still trying to get their shit together, find out who they are. I mean, that phase lasts up until, like, age 27, because, you know. Yeah, I, I know, but just... No, I I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But, yeah, and, uh, like, I don't know, it just, it, just feels we- it just feels weird to me. Like I said, like, I have my youngest brother is about that age. So it, it would be like me dating one of his friends, and that just seems icky to me. I I totally get you. Uh, I mean, I mean, obviously they're adults. They can do whatever they want to do as long as everything's consensual. But like, it's just it's a little weird. I like, do like it though, where she's like, "Oh, you're college grad. That's something." And he's like, "No, high school." And she's like, "He's a fucking child." Yep, and, and I love that because like they like Sharice and Simon do not let that go throughout the 
whole show. Throughout the whole show. Nope. Um, and that's how real friends are. You can't, like, unless, unless you, like, have never had, like, a solid group of, like, very close friends. Groups of close friends, like, they constantly, constantly roast the fuck out of each other. Whenever one of you, whenever one of them does some dumb shit. Honestly, honestly, I hate to say this, but I only till recently got to that spot. Then again, you know, I grew up in Japan, and uh, over there, a lot of the military community and all that move out every three years. So. Yeah. But yeah, point being, like that—that that was it. Was it was just really funny to like have that as like the running joke? Is like, oh, you you going to see your baby again? <laughs> yeah. You going to see the baby rock star? Yeah. But then also in the same vein, though, they're like, oh, he could get us free tickets. Okay. Yeah, I right, bet. I right, bet. <laughs> like, I mean, seriously though, like that's always great. Um, and. Um, like, I, I love that Simon points out, he goes, you do got, you guys do realize that, like, st- b- backstage near the speakers is probably the worst spot to, like, watch a show. Cause, like, the shit's all up in your ears. Can't, you can't really hear anything. Your, your, your view is kind of off, too. I've only gotten, like, that type of shit once. And it is pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. I would prefer the regular ass seat. But um, like yeah, uh, yeah, I I I dug uh, him throughout, and I'm glad they didn't like overuse him either. You know, like he could have like been one of those characters that got annoying if he overstayed his welcome. And yeah, and his ultimate like breakup with her was realistic. It was like he's nineteen and he's touring. So yeah, he does. Yeah, he. Does, I don't want to be tied down while I'm touring and I'm nineteen years old. <laughs> well, no, he was, he was nineteen, so he was stupidly saying, "Okay, come with me." Yep. And she had to be the adult and be like, "No." Well, no, he at first he said, "Come with me," but then when it went international, he yep. said, "He said you don't come with me, but." We can get together when I come back. Yep. Because he still liked her. Because, I mean, how could you not? She's Zoe Kravitz. Yeah, I mean, damn. Uh, but, yeah, like, no, that was great. Uh, I, I did I did like his whole thing. All right, so now let's talk about Simon. Um, Simon's really fun. I like Simon a lot. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I have several, like, I have several Simon friends. Um. I have several Simon friends, so I, I totally like appreciate the I appreciate the value of a Simon, um, because like he, he he's the one he's the one that like will sit you down and be like, all right, look, I love you, but you're a fucking mess right now. Um, let me tell you what is wrong with you in the most detailed way possible, so you do not misconstrue me whatsoever. <laughs> oh. But I end up misconstruing you anyway. Sorry, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. I apologize. I... Uh, but yeah, no, for real though. Uh, he he's a really good friend all throughout, and um, I I like that like she, uh, he was one of her like top five breakups, uh, because <laughs> he found out he was gay while he was dating her, or like he like you know fully accepted that he was gay. While he was dating her. Yep. But then also when he finds out that he's on the list, he's like, Bitch, I do the same exact things that we used to do yeah. when yeah, we were like, dating. Yeah, except he was like, for, I, yeah, except, we don't except, sleep except, together. And he's like, and he says, we never, and on top of that, we never did. So, really, nothing's changed. I never left you. I'm still fucking here. She's like, oh. Although I do feel bad for him, though, because 
it takes him so long to get with the barista dude. Yeah. But it's mostly because he's involved in Rob's shit, and like he doesn't get any, any time to himself. Well, also, just he he's insecure about himself. Yeah, yeah. Which, that was something that I vibed on, his insecurities, plus the fact that Plus the fact that uh, he's always the doting ear friend who listens to their friends' problems, which definitely me. Well, um, I'm uh, I'm actually the one that listens to friends' problems most of the time. Well, we both do, dude. Honestly, but I'm. <laughs> he was also like the more nicer because because Cerise will be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" Oh, yeah, that's definitely me. Like, bitch, get your shit together. He's like, hey, uh, you might want to do this. And also... <laughs> yeah, that that's definitely more of you. Yeah, that's definitely more And also, you notice several times, he just kept asking Rob, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And that's definitely a me thing. And he, yo, and he... I I hate, and this is one of the things that made me, like, real pissed off at Rob, is Rob just, could, like, ignores him a lot. Yep. And I'm just like, yo, he is so, he is so much of a down friend, and you're just, like, not even paying attention to him. Like, that is, that's so fucked up. That's so fucked up. Yep. Um... I kind of almost hoped that uh, that at the end she had got him the shirt that messed up. Yep. But well, the fact that she got Sharice the guitar yeah, is a miracle. Yeah, yeah, that badass guitar. Like, damn. That's a miracle that she remembered that. I want to know, what I want to know is, that guitar is super expensive. I want to know, did she go the extra mile and sell her Bowie? Ooh. Yeah, because said that they take a couple thousand for it. Yep. Oh, shit. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, yeah. I mean, they also brought that up. A lot, so. And it was, you know, and technically it was stolen, so. I mean, not, it was stolen, but not stolen. Because, like, he left the money. Which, by the way, real quick, you talk about side characters and all. I did like that one-off rich lady. She was hilarious. I I liked her a lot. She was fun. She was real fun. Um, You know that we know uh, both her and her husband. Oh, yeah? They're in other shows that we talk about. Oh, yeah? The husband is in Big Little Lies. Who was he in Big Little Lies? Was he uh, Laura Dern's husband? Yep. That's what I thought. Okay. And she was actually, is actually in Lost in Space. The mom? Dr. Smith. Oh, Dr. Smith. Parker Posey. Yeah, I still haven't seen that latest season. Me neither, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> it um, just got into, like, a weird spot for us, because it came out, like... Christmas, Christmas time? Eve. Yeah. And it's just, like, not only did we have family stuff, but then we had other shows that were coming out. on Christmas Around Christmas time? Yeah, so, like... But, yeah, that's cool. Um, All right, so, without further ado, because this will actually lead us lead us into talking about other side characters as well as we talk about their relationship to, to her. Let's talk about Rob. So, Rob. I want to I open up by saying, like, I like her, but also fuck her. Like, mm-hmm. she is, she's pretty fucking bad, man. Um, okay, so, first off, uh, I want to talk about, like, the relatability factor of Rob. So, like, Anybody who has been through the ringer in terms of relationships and has had enough bad experiences to make a top 10 list of uh, worst breakups and worst relationships, uh, 
They definitely can relate to Rob. And, you know, in the beginning, I was definitely feeling it. I was like, nah, I get it. I've been here. I've, I've definitely, like, you know, made my own sad playlist and sat in my room in the dark and just, like, you know, obsessed and stalked Instagrams and Twitters and Facebook. Um, like, I, I, I get it. I get it. But, like, I never let that shit go on for over a year. Um, like... If uh, like if if you if you ask any of my friends, one of one of uh, one of the things they will always tell you is that I'm always super quick to bounce back, because one of my like coping mechanisms, like I can like openly acknowledge this. One of my coping mechanisms is to get over. I tend to like you know just find someone else real quick to distract up until I can, you know, find something more stable. So um, you could say that to get over, you like to get under. Yeah, no, I was trying to avoid saying that, but yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> I was trying to avoid that, but yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. I can't even pretend like I'm not fun. Look, look, all the character, all the TV characters that I relate to on sitcoms are the Barney Stinsons, the Joeys, the fucking like. That's me. So I, I get And it. I'm always the Chandler, the Marshall, just minus finding the girl. <laughs> oh man. Uh but yeah, no, uh so like she um I at first admired this whole like mission of self discovery thing. I was like, okay, that makes sense. I I can see why this could help you. Um but then as it goes along and then her reasoning behind it and what she says and how she's like, oh, yeah, it's not my fault. Like, actually, breakups are always the fault of both parties. Like, I, it's ne- I was hoping that that would go longer because that's like a big part about the movie mm-hmm. is him revisiting his exes and learning from it. Yeah. And here it's just like one, two episodes. Yep. It's just like, well, fuck. Um, one of my, my favorite ex though has to be uh Cat, the Instagram influencer. Mm-hmm. She was great. Well, uh, really enjoyed her. Um, I really like that. The, like they tackled like you know the plasticness of the like the social media influencer world, which I I love it. Like one of her last lines on the show is like. <laughs> You think this place is mine? Darling, this was rented for the event. Come along. Come, come. Oh, man, that was so good. So good. And I also like that, like, she puts on, like, this almost British-esque accent, like, around other people. But then, like, but then, like, when she finds out that Rob was really on this journey of discovery, she cuts the shit, gets back to her regular voice. She's like, I knew it. I fucking knew it. Yep. No, that that was great. That was great. Uh, honestly, I don't think I could. I don't. I honestly don't think I could ever do this. Um, mostly because probably the person on my number one, I will never ever speak to under <laughs> any circumstances whatsoever. I don't care. If, I don't care what it has to be like. You know, she, 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 I could have a fatal disease and she could have the cure, and I would just be like, "No, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'll, I'll just go where I need to go." From what I've heard, that's a good thing. That you don't want to ever revisit that. Nope, never, 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 never. And if by some miracle she's listening to this, fuck you. Okay, no, nah. no. Nah. Nope. Never happened. In this house, we do not stand. Nope. 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 Just not at all. But anyway, like, I did, again, I like this whole process. I like this concept. Obviously, it's been something that's been done in other TV shows and other movies and such. Like, High Fidelity wasn't the first to do it. It was probably one of the most popular, but it wasn't the first to do it. Um, I mean, even there was just a movie, I think, last year. Uh, that had Tiffany Haddish in it, where the plot was 
a woman going and revisiting her exes, but it pro- the unique pro- thing. What? Well, I, I was gonna say I think it was I think it was like I think that was the uh, like the the remake of the Mel Gibson like the the what what men want or whatever. No, this was a different one because it was about a girl who was a flight attendant. Oh yeah, 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 right. Who was okay. revisiting her exes, mm-hmm. who were um, all around the world. Also, probably my favorite one of these types of premises is uh, a very obscure movie. Um, that uh, uh, that I did not know about, but um, I was having a movie night with Elizabeth, and she was like, "Okay, you gotta watch this one." There ha- there's a lot of people in this movie, um, and you know who the you know who the lead guy is. So I don't remember who who the girl. I forget who the girl is, but she's also somebody big. But you know who her like who who she ends up with by the end, who like is kind of her her friend who like you know helps her through the journey, but like by helping her, they end up falling in love and getting together who captain fucking america oh chris evans yeah like it's uh it's a movie called what's your number uh and it's about like this this chick she reads an article about like you know um if you've slept with over i think like 200 people like chances are like you fa- you found the one probably within the first the, the first 30 or the first 20 so so she goes through like the first 20 um and uh she, and she refuses to um she refuses to sleep with chris evans all throughout because because like uh she's like nah uh, i got like the, the, oh. the next one the, because because if i if i reach this number if i reach 200 it has that 200th one has to be the one um so i refuse so she kept refusing to sleep with chris evans the whole time she must have some massive willpower because this was like post first Avenger, so he was jacked. I remember this movie. I just googled it. I remember this. Yeah, it was, it was Anna chick Ferris. From House Bunny. Yeah, chick from House Bunny. Anna Ferris. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah, it's, and it's a re- it's a really good movie. And you know who else was in that movie? Who? Um. The former Mister Anna, Anna. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Star yep. Lord. Yep, he was there too. Also, you know who uh, was the the who was in there as well? Like, and this was before uh, Winter Soldier. This was before who? Winter Soldier. Uh, but uh, one of one of the twenty that she slept with was a guy was a like a politician. Um, who was uh, one of the guys she slept with in college was a politician, but turns out he's gay. You know who that guy is? Who was played who? by? Anthony fucking Mackey. Nice. So uh, <laughs> Captain America and Falcon are Eskimo brothers in a, in a movie. Well, um, you know who else was in the movie? Oh, now this is just turning into the What's Your Number podcast. Well, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say the new Mr. Mixapitic look. Yeah. He was also but, uh, Yeah, th- that, that's a good one. I would love to see that one turn into a Hulu show. Yeah. Um... But yeah, no. Um, so going back to it, uh, yeah, the, my favorite ex has to be uh, Cat, and obviously the one we get the most like detail on is Mac. And I really like Mac. I felt bad for him, man. Felt real bad for him. Feels bad, man. Feels real bad. Mm-hmm. Like, because, because you know, the we find out like later on that the reason for their breakup is because like Rob thought that. No, no, not Rob. Max thought that Rob had like fallen out of love with him, and that's why like uh, she wanted to break off the engagement. And so he left and went to London and moved on. Uh, and then, like you know, just when he you know is good, he's got a new fiance. Um, he and Rob are starting to be friends, but not in a like oh they're definitely gonna get back together kind of friends way. Uh, you know, uh, he wants to, like, just have fun with her on her birthday because, you know, he does still care about her because he'll always care about her. Um, and she goes and she fucking tells him that she fucking cheated on him the night they got engaged. Oh, my God. What a horrible piece of shit. Wait, she found out. She found the ring. Went, mm-hmm. smoked, then 
went to a bar, slept with a rando, and came back and ex- told him about the ring, said that she accepts, and then they slept and, together. Yeah, sure, that's gross. That's gross. Mm-hmm. Like, there is a thing about being Eskimo brothers, and then there's a thing about being Eskimo brothers on the same day. Seriously. That's just, it's, she's just so fucked up, man. Like, and like, the epitome of this fucked upness isn't, isn't even just with Mac, but definitely Mac gets a lot of it. The, like, the biggest, uh, like, victim of her fucked upness is freaking Clyde. Such a good character. Such a good dude. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he starts off as just the rando that she hooks up with to try and get over Mac. And then, like, you know, th- through a couple times of just hanging out with him, they really bond and they have this really good chemistry. He starts to develop feelings for her, but she's always, like, friend zoning him. Um, or I guess friends with benefits zoning him. Well, it's weird the way that their thing happens because. It starts off with just the whole proving that she's over Mac, so she goes on a date, and then she's bored by uh, like Clyde at first, and so she tries to sneak out, uh, but then she leaves her phone, and so she has to go back. Yep, and then they hook up, and and then uh, like you know he had promised to like to take her to breakfast, so, so so she was excited at first, and then she wakes up. He's not there. She's like, oh, fuck. He just fucking, he, he fucking lied to me and just a walk of shame. And then we find out that his car was towed early in the morning and that's why he left. And it was like legit towed and it wasn't an excuse. Um, Holy crap. It just hit me. What? A subtle nod to that was when they go uptown and they park. She checks the parking. To make sure that he won't get towed again. Yep. Pretty cool. Because she told yes. him it's okay to park there. Yep. She doesn't know anything about cars. I mean, you know, uh, you know, a- as a New Yorker, like, not my, it's not really efficient to have a car um, in the city. Like, um, and, and, unless, you know, unless you're like me and, you know, walking isn't really your thing. <laughs> But, yeah. Otherwise, you know, most people just walk to places. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, you know, not many people, unless you unless you're rich enough to own a car, you don't own a car because you it's not even worth it because you can't find fucking parking anywhere. I mean, just watch the How I Met Your Mother where they talked about all that. I was gonna say legit. Like the uh, the only person I, I was shocked. That Jessica Jones owned a car. Like it made sense for Trish to own a car, but I was like, "Why did Jessica have a car?" Not only can she take the train, she can also fly. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, but but you know that, that's just that's another conversation for another time. Uh, but yeah, she was really shitty to him, and like he went out of his way to like to help with the whole like the the, the sale of like the records, and he stole the Bowie. But not really stole because he left her the twenty dollar bill. Yeah, so he's like that bad ish. Mm-hmm. And and then also when when her brother invites her to that awesome the last hurrah yep. party thing, and Max there, he comes yeah. in and he's like, "I know our situation is complicated, but." You need me to be a fake boyfriend, so fake boyfriend it is. Yep, and then they then they start to make out, and it's just like, well, wait, so are these fake kisses or real kisses? And she goes, I don't know. And he goes, well, no, fuck that. Because, good, know your worth, King. Know your worth. Do not just be somebody's, like, one-time lay, and I, like, or just, just use for sex. Like, I, I said this to, I said this to, I mean, I don't know if Brian's seen the episode, but I said this to Jorge on, um, like, in the recent Katie Keene episode. Because, again, been I've there. Seen it. Okay. I was and my say. review is up on Blair. Okay, well, yeah, we'll get to that when we get to plugs, but good. Okay, so I can say this. Yeah, so I was like, I, I said this to Jorge, and I was like, no, don't do that. 
like, been there, uh, been there, refused to be there ever again, should never mm-hmm. settle. Yep. Uh, but, uh, and also, and, at the end, where she keeps calling someone, I was like, I am not gonna get my hopes up that it's Clyde, because I know that's fucking gonna be Mac. I'm not gonna get my hopes up that yep, it's Clyde. That, that, that's what I said the whole time. I was like, it's fucking Mac. It's fucking Mac. We know it's, it, it's, it's not gonna be Clyde. It's fucking Mac. And then, and then it's Clyde, and simultaneously, I'm like, gay, because no, I'm I'm like I'm like double yay. I'm I'm like double yay because like yay, she's calling Clyde, but also yay, Clyde isn't dealing with this bullshit. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's just like yay, I'm conflicted because yay, she did actually pick Clyde, but also yay, yay. For Clyde because he's doing the right thing and. He's not saying completely no, but he's saying nine percent. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I I would have been so pissed if he would have just if he would have just like taken her back right there. No, he's done, she he deserves so much better. She's done so much to him. No, fuck that. Mm-hmm. You got to earn that back. And I'm glad he was like nine percent. I would have given her like a five percent. I would have given her like a five percent. Like nine is very generous. That's almost ten percent. Like, nah. Like, I, I felt really bad for him. Like, I, 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 really, I do. If this, you know, show does get a second season, I do. I ship them, but also like, I just, I, I want him to find somebody better, and and Rob to realize, well, oh shit, maybe I am horrible. Because we find out that this dude is a literal saint. Seriously, what he does, he go all his volunteering and shit. I'm just like, how? All do you his hurt? climbing, because he talks about climbing several times during the show, and we think, oh, he's just the like elitist, rich kind of guy who gets his exercise by climbing, because mm-hmm. it's the it thing to do. Mm-hmm. No. We find out that the reason why he's climbing is because he's working with children. Underprivileged children. Yup. And uh, he's doing this so they can afford like free exercise and it's like a boys and girls club like after school program type thing. And he started this because he was afraid of children and wanted to get out of his comfort zone. Yep. It's just like that's kind of funny, your reasoning behind it, but I'll be damned if that's not, like, a saintly thing to do. Yeah, he's such a good guy, man. Like, Rob, no, Rob doesn't deserve someone as good as him. Like, but also, like, a side note, I'm also glad that, like, Rob did not ruin Mac and Lily. Like, Mac and Lily, they ended up being fine after Lily got to, like, say her piece to Rob. I also like that they had the shot with them and, like, you see the rock. And they're on the other side of the rock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, that and the nice. fact And the fact that they were, uh... The fact that they had a moment, but it wasn't what you thought. Mm-hmm. Because... Yeah. Because she was just pissed that, you know, she hurt Mac like that. It wasn't... I'm glad it wasn't like the oh they they slept because the way they kept framing it was that like uh like oh he had the key to her apartment oh they're gonna go in they're gonna fuck oh shit. yeah like even when you watch it on Hulu Hulu will sometimes give you a preview image and the preview image for the finale was them sitting yep. them lying down. In front of the rock, and at first I was like, "Oh, that's them after they've had sex." Yep, and I'm just like, "Oh God, no!" But I'm glad it wasn't that. Good for good for Mac. Fuck Rob. Get, get, uh, you know, go be happy, man. You deserve it. Lily seems nice. She seems good. Like she, you know, she's no Zoe Kravitz, but she, she's definitely like you know, seems like a good person. 
unlike Rob. Mm-hmm. Because, like, she was also, like, actively trying to be cool and, like, you know, not be jealous or insecure about her ex hanging out with his, like, you know, ex that he was deeply in love with. You know what I mean? Like, she extended the olive branch and, like, that takes a lot of, like, guts. Like, you have to be a much bigger person to be able to do that. Yeah, I thought almost for a moment there that Rob was going to have some clarity, like, when she, and it's like, ah, oh, fuck, it's harder to hate her because she's nice. Yeah, but she didn't. She still hated her. And I'm like, why do you hate her? She's, she's so nice. Yes. But I just, I just love it, though, because it's like at the, towards the end, every time a character would run into her, it's like, Rob, you're an asshole. Right. Um, real quick, before we, like, wrap up and stuff, let's talk about Cameron. I, I like Cameron. Cameron's arc is pretty kind of standard for these types of movies and TV shows. Uh, you know, he's uh, becoming a dad and, like, you know, mm-hmm. taking the next big step in his life. And so he's afraid of, like, losing his edge and, like, you know, leaving the person he used to be behind. Mm-hmm. Um, so he ends up having this, like, last hurrah where he gets fucked up with all his buddies um, and this is where, like, the whole awkward situation with Mac and, you know, Rob and then Clive comes in to save the day because happens. Because um, he, gets, he gets really drunk and then decides to take cocaine, which, by the way, people, even straight-laced me, who has never really gotten drunk and are taking drugs, knows this. You don't mix uppers and downers. Nope. You're gonna have a bad time. And so but... he gets into a fight with the dude. And and I love it, though, because he goes to punch the dude, falls down, and almost splits his head on the table. <laughs> yep. And then Clyde, being the badass that he is, has to step in and knock out the guy in one punch. Yep. That was awesome. And then I, I also love... The sister-in-law and her reaction. She's like, well, that's a, what the fuck happened? And then when she hears it, she's like, we're going to have to grow up, but only a little. We're not going to, I don't want to change the man that I was. Yeah, she goes, I'm a badass too, man. I don't want to stop. And it's like, you know what I'm going to do first thing after we have this baby? I'm I mean, gonna get drunk as fuck. And I mean, like, black out, throw up on the furniture, possibly on the baby, don't Throw my us. shoe, get cereal <laughs> all over the kitchen. Been there. <laughs> also, also, like, I feel like that's the thing that most people do after they have the baby. <laughs> after they have their baby. <laughs> Cause, um, like the like, I know for a fact, like my sister, she doesn't really drink anymore. Like she's very much gone into mom mode now that her kid's like seven. Um, but like I know, like the first, like as soon as she could, like that was the first thing she did after she had my niece. So like that's that's definitely hilarious. Uh, I I liked her a lot. We barely got to see her, and I hope if this gets the second season, we'll get to see more of her. Um, mm-hmm. Cause like the birth of the baby was a real nice moment. Also, I love that like I love the like the baby name conversation. Yeah, and the real and the real life situation that I've only seen how I met your mother cover, and that sometimes when the situation actually comes to name the baby, you don't have a name. Yep. And it was like I, I love I love the I love the last words like we all we were also stuck on Raekwon and then Rob and uh, Rob and Cameron just have a high five. I was like, yeah, Raekwon, yeah, name him after the chef, name him after the chef, <laughs> Raekwon the chef. You got to do it. And I, I also love when he's like selling his records to Rob, and he goes, "You're telling me your baby won't like NWA? He's your kid. He's gonna like NWA." He goes, "Are you sure that you're the father?" It's like, yeah, 
Is your kid? Yeah. And he's going to like NWA. I, 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 I really dig that. And I really dug that back and forth because she doesn't want him to sell it. So she's like, all I can give you is store credit for it. He's just like, fine, give me the poster. <laughs> I, I I really I, I just I just liked them a lot. Um, and mm-hmm. like again, the mo- the moment with their baby is really really sweet. I hope if this does get a second and season that we get to see more of them. Also, um, yet yet again, uh, I know this happened recently, but yet again, we have a person who's just telling it like it is, calling the main character horrible, and I'm just like, yep. Yep, hundred percent. When he's when he's high and drunk and goes off a of rob like how yeah, much... yeah. And she goes, he goes, you ruin every single relationship you're in. I'm like, he's not, wrong. you know, he's high, but he ain't wrong. Because we find out that even even the one that she was cheated on with Cat, it's because Cat was like too complicated. And also because she was too clingy. Yeah. You were too mm-hmm. complicated and clingy. Yep. But. And, and like, you know, Rob never made the effort to try to understand Cat or Cat's world, you know? Exactly. Because even when she goes to the Instagram thing, she meets the, like, I guess, newbie of the group and. They instantly bond until she looks up and she's like, yeah, they're a bunch of assholes. And it's like, you didn't even give them a chance. Like, you know, uh, I, I, I hate the fact that I have to, like, call myself this uh, because I don't really feel myself as one. But as someone who is technically a social media influencer, because, you know, that's kind of the field when you, you know, do content creation and stuff. Um, like... It's just kind of dumb to assume that all YouTubers or all, like, you know, video, uh, content creators or, like, you know, Instagram, uh, like, you know, personalities are all the same or all, like, a, a Jake Paul, Logan Paul, KSI type of person. You know? Like, that's, that's, that's fucked up. Like, not all YouTubers are bad, okay? Like, it, it, it's just some of them. Mm, I mean, you also got, like, the super real people, like, Phil and Shane. Yep. Or, like, a, like a, you know, someone that, that like, keep, uh, like, you know, it's pretty authentic, despite, like, you know, her life coming up. Like, Emma Chamberlain. I really like Emma Chamberlain. She's good. Like, but before this devolves into, like, favorite YouTuber shoutouts, uh, yeah, um, any closing thoughts on the show? Well, just... Also, um, one other thing about the brother and all that is at the end where she, where he's calling her and she's like, I know you think that I'm all about me and I'm all self-absorbed while well, he's just tried to tell her, shut up, the yep. baby's coming. Yep. Yeah, she's trying to apologize and make it about her. And she goes, Rob, Rob, baby. What? Why are you calling me baby? No, the baby. And then she hears, ah, it's the background and she's like, Oh, baby. Yep. Uh, and I love that even though, like, her and Sharice are in a fight, like, she goes, oh, shit, Cameron's having the baby, lock up for me. But there's a delivery coming, so wait for that. And she's like, I got you. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, great stuff, great stuff. Uh, so, yeah, closing thoughts on the show? Um... It's a very somber, bittersweet show. Not exactly what I expected going into it. But I really did like it, and I hope it does get a season two. Um, but, but I will say that I kind of hope that it doesn't end the way the movie ended. How did the movie end? If I remember correctly, it ended with... Uh, him realizing how much better he could be as a person to make the relationship work with the Mac equivalent. Oh, no. Ew. But they did things a little bit more uh, rom-com formulaic. 
Yes, you know. and, and, and this is definitely more of like a, a almost a deconstruction type thing. Yeah, so I hope it doesn't go that way. Yeah, this, if she's going to end up with somebody, she's got to earn Clyde back. Like, it's got to be Clyde. Mm-hmm. Um, indeed. And I really want that. And I even want to see, like, a scene where I know it's, like, going to be kind of rom-com cliche, but I want to see a scene where where Rob is trying to be around the kids and help with the rock climbing. That would be hilarious. I'd love that. Yeah, um, and she and she like teaches them about music and stuff. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, and I would like to see this trend of rom coms being turned into it, and turned into TV shows. And you talk about um, you talk about a newer one that you want to see, which is what's what's your number? Yep, a newer one that I want to see, which ironically enough had Chris Pratt in it. And also had another person that we talked about earlier, Jason Siegel, in it. Um, the five year engagement. Oh, that's a good one. That's a real good one. And I think it could I think it could uh work well as a TV show, like flashing between their two different lives and all that. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so that's about it. Well, we both, like we said, really enjoyed the show. Uh, again, thank you guys for listening. And now we're getting into plug time, that special time of the night where we both let you guys know what is coming up on our individual, like, you know, media platforms. For me, it's Vlair. You just search me up on Vlair.tv, Mr. J's Reviews, and you will find me. And for Brian, it is both YouTube and Vlair. Um, for the YouTube people, um, links to these will be in the description and for the podcast people links will be in the description as well yes and uh, you just search up my name Brian Kersey on YouTube or Vlair although mm. on, on YouTube he is the second one yeah I, if you see more than one I'm the one who's talking about TV and I'm the one who's got a hundred plus videos yep <laughs> so yeah uh brian what do you have coming up this week or like what have you done this past week you know as of recording this well um this week has been kind of um bad for me i've been it's one of those times where it's like you don't realize that you're sick until something happens to you oh uh, i hate that So, I was like, the day that, Thursday when Katie Keene was supposed to come out, uh, I ended up taking a a long ass nap and oversleeping, um, which I then had to turn around and get back up for work on Friday. (laughs) So, So, I was like, okay. Don't really have time to record then. And then I'll be damned if it didn't happen again on Friday. Um, where I I slept. I had like two unplanned naps on Friday. So I guess it's because my body was like, you no longer have to do work. So blah. Huh. And so, um, all my reviews were late. I had to skip Owl House. Um, Harley didn't come out until, uh, the day, the day of recording this on Saturday. And, uh, Katie Keene on Vlair didn't come out until, I think, today, earlier today, uh, this morning. And, uh, so, uh, go check those out, but also, uh, starting anew on Sunday, this one is intense, because we've got Doctor Who, which is the first half of the two-part finale. Yep. Which looks insane. 
I'm really excited for this one. I mean, now now I've realized that I'm, it's probably safer for me to just watch Doctor Who on Mondays because I never have time on Sundays with like uh, with game day and uh, like the whole all the shows and shit. So I usually watch it on Mondays now. But yeah, I've, I'm caught up. I'm excited. Then we've got um, Batwoman, which I've kind of stopped reviewing because last week really pissed me off. You gonna go back to it, or are you just gonna keep? You're just gonna drop it. I'm gonna until something big happens. I'm probably gonna just continue to drop it because I've got work, and also I've got two other shows that day that I want to review. I got gotcha. you. Because we've also got another big episode tomorrow. Supergirl's 100, which is gonna be awesome, and hopefully it's gonna correct some stuff. Um, and it's always nice to see Mixie. Even, and I mean, uh, it's a post-crisis Mixie, but it's a Mixie. Played by, honestly, no offense, a better actor. Yep, a more seasoned actor. I'll say that. But um, who apparently is a super core shipper? It seems. Yep. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Mixie is the fandom, so that I mean that's what he always is, so that's great. But um also they've confirmed that we're having a lot of returns. Uh Mr. Supergirl's gonna be back. Uh it's confirmed that, that this is the third episode that Wynn's gonna be in. Okay. Uh you also have Sam and Agent Liberty coming back. It's a hodgepodge of people, and it looks oh, like oh, Sam as in girl Sam, because I was like Agent Liberty's actor's name is Sam, so I was like, oh yeah, yeah, Sam slash Rain. Okay, gotcha. And then we're gonna have Agent Liberty back. Cool, interesting. And, and we're gonna get a lot of like, not flashbacks, but like. Redos, kind of. Yeah. Alternate history flashbacks, kind of. Um, which yeah. will be... That'll be interesting to see. Um, then, Monday, I believe... I could be wrong, but I believe Black Lightning comes back. Because I know it took last week off. I think it comes back this week. I could be wrong. Uh... Then Tuesday is Legends. Yep. Which I'm excited for this one. It's the Genghis Khan episode. Khan! Oh, and, so, uh, so good. Like, Katie Glutz was asked, like, what's her favorite ep- what was her favorite episode to see? That she can't wait to see to be in live action, and it was this one. Mm-hmm. So that'll be interesting to see. Uh, I think she may have directed it. I don't know. Oh, cool. Um, but so that'll be interesting. Also, uh, Wednesday we've got nothing. Nancy's not back yet. Nothing, and then Thursday is just Katie. Yeah, just Katie. Legacy doesn't come back until, uh, like, the second week of March? No, first week of March. First week of March. So, just Katie Keene on Blair. Hopefully, I'll get that sooner to you. Uh, Because I did the first one, it did really well. Then I had to skip the second one because of tech issues, and then the third one was late. (laughs) It's funny. I also had to skip the second one because of tech issues. Um... But um, then, then uh, Fridays is hopefully I can do Owl House now that it's my only thing on Fridays. But then it's Channel Chasers on Saturday, and yep, we're... and we are covering Harley Quinn, uh, season one, DC Universe's Harley Quinn. Uh, the season just wrapped up this past week as of recording this, and I'm really excited to talk about this one. Um, mm-hmm. And also, um, I'm excited to get into speculations. 
Yeah, because season two was announced. Like, they have a date and everything. Yeah, so... So we're not, also, we're, we're, we're not dealing with a Swamp Thing, people. This is not a one and done, thank God. And also the way that season one ended. I probably, I would have been, I would have been more pissed. Although I didn't finish Swamp Thing, but uh, I would have been more pissed if this one had just ended here. Because, like, that's huge. Um, but yeah, uh, so, all right, moving on to me. Um, hopefully tomorrow I will get my review of Hunters Season 1 out. Holy shit, you guys. This is the best show I have watched of 2020 so far. It's still pretty early in 2020, so that's what I'm saying. But this is the best show I've watched of 2020. Like, hands down, no question. Holy shit. Like, Jordan Peele, you are the man. Al Pacino, you are the man. Logan Lerman, dude, dude. Percy Jackson is far behind you. You are forgiven. Uh, I'm, I never, but I never blamed you. Um, but and, yo, and from what I've heard, a lot of people said that they thought that he could do. They thought that he could do Percy, but yeah, he could. But they, but it was written wrong. But yeah, no. It, Hunters is phenomenal. Like, if you have any spare time whatsoever, watch this fucking show. It will blow your mind. Now, granted, this is not for the faint of heart. It is super gruesome, and there are a lot of Holocaust flashbacks. So if you, uh, you know, if you're not cool with watching some heavy stuff from history, maybe skip it. But if you got the stomach for it and can handle it, it's a fantastic show. This is on the level of the boys. Like, oh my god. Like, I I had to fight so hard not to change the schedule, but I'm not going to skip out on the shows that I loved as much as Alter Carbon. Um, well, especially tying it back into it, the lead character is going to be... Anthony Mackie, yeah. Which, that'll be interesting. Also, uh, Joining the cast is Simone. Uh, I'm blanking on her last name. Misty. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Misty Knight, Misty Knight's actress. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's Sunday. Uh, hope, and I'll also hopefully get a review of Batwoman up because I feel like you know, as a member of the Batwoman podcast, I still got to review Batwoman. Um, and so- this. And I will be fair. I will be fair. This does look interesting. It's yep. the vampire episode. Nocturna. With Vicky with Vicky Donovan playing Nocturna for anyone who's a vampire diaries fan. So like they, they love to reuse the vampire diaries people. Um Yep. Unfortunately though, the main person that they're reusing, they're not reusing her well. Yep. Uh, but, uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, so that's Sunday. Um, I've decided I'm watching Doctor Who, but I just don't have enough time to review it. So, uh, you know, we'll eventually talk about it on Channel Tasters, hopefully. But, um. Oh, shit. Actually, I don't think we can. We don't have enough room. Uh, but. We might not, because March is a busy month. People. Yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. We don't have enough room. Sorry about that. But, uh, yeah. I will be watching Doctor Who, so I'll tweet about it, I guess. Um, uh, maybe if you have time, you can do a season end thing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe if there's time of the week, I'll do like a season overview like type of review. But yeah, so won't be reviewing Doctor Who. Uh, Supergirl will hopefully be on Monday. Also, I'll be watching Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. But again, I just have so much shit going on on Sunday. Not going to review it, uh, but I will be watching it. Um, it's a really great show. Um um, I will be reviewing, however, Dare Me, because the last couple episodes are coming up, and it's this show is so intense. I love it. Uh, I really love it. Riverdale, And I wish notes. we could cover that on Channel Chasers, but... Yep. No room. No time. Sorry, guys. Uh, but Dare Me's great. Riverdale, you need to take notes about cheerleading from this show. Um, so, that's Sunday. Uh, Monday, it's just The Good Doctor. Tuesday... 
I promise this time I will cover Flash. A lot of people are like, are you just not liking Flash? Because it seems like everybody's hating on Flash. And you stopped covering it. Actually, guys, I really like the episodes. It's just... I have a lot of stuff watch, to watch on Tuesday, and so I got real tired, and I didn't uh, review Flash, but love the episode. Uh, speaking of stuff I have to review on Tuesday, uh, so Legends, Flash, This Is Us, uh, those three, uh, Busy Day, um, and then Wednesday, It's Nothing, Thursday, Just Katie Keen, uh, Friday, we got Star Wars, The Clone Wars, and Owl House, so that's exciting. Um, and I believe there's something coming out, uh, next week. What, what's coming out next week? There's something coming out next week. I can't remember off the top. Uh, there's, I, but whatever it is, uh, you'll see it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for plugs. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of High, on High Fidelity. And hopefully you'll join us next week so we can talk about Harley Quinn Season 1 because that was a blast. But until next time, we'll catch you guys later. Peace. Peace.